everybody, this is Mickey Clayton, the coach. Insights presenting the Claflin Athletic Show, sponsored by Tony T. Chrysler Dodge Jeep of Orangeburg, South Carolina. And with me today, we have <laughs> building himself into legendary status, former assistant at the men's side of the program, Coach Terrence Jenkins. Good morning and welcome to the show, Coach. Good morning, Mr. Clayton, and thank you for having us. Oh, man, Coach, you know, I, I tell you, I had my start in, in women's basketball, at least coaching, you know. And uh, so we got to make sure that these young ladies receive the attention and notoriety that they deserve. And right off the bat, I'd like to know how you ended up coaching the men. And in the middle of the screen, you changed swimming from freestyle to having to do the backstroke. Tell, tell us what happened. Yeah, it's been a little roller coaster. Uh, Mr. Tony O'Neill came to me after um, a contest against Columbus State on the men's side, and he, he came to me and said he needed me on the other side. At the time, I didn't know what he was talking about, and I was like, what other side? He's like, the women's program. And I was like, okay, I can go over there for a couple of games, thinking, you know, I have done it before in the past, so, you know, I was going to have to go over there and just help him out for two or three games. And he's like, no. You know, you're not understanding me. I need you for the rest of the year. And I was like, oh, so I had to, you know, change my dialogue and my my thinking real quick. And I was like, I think I can handle that, Mr. Teal. You know, and me being a Claflin grad and being here my whole adult life, I just feel like, you know, I can I'll do anything for my, for my institution. Well, Coach, I always think it's an advantage when you are coaching at the institution that you attended and played. I mean. Um, tell us some of the advantages that are, have, have helped you in terms of making that transition and transition in terms of coaching and with your relationship with your players. Well, I know the lay of the land. And I think one of the best things that's helping me with this process, I was able to go over there and get baptized with the women's, with, with the women's um, basketball side. Because I've been coaching men's basketball for the last 16, 17 years here at Claflin. So me going over there for that half a year, getting, you know, affirmated with the young ladies. And, of course, I already know the lay of the land of the campus, you know, financial aid, housing, a mission, the registered office, and all those good things. So that's always a good advantage, always knowing the landscape of where you at. Okay. And, and how does that help you uh, a little bit more, digging a little deeper, about how does it help you in terms of the relationships with the faculty? and being able to, to talk to your young ladies about some of the classes they take and the instructors they have. Absolutely, that's always good because, you know, some instructors are harder than others. And even with the admission process, you know, me me having a relationship with the admission um, Cornell is always good. And when I'm bringing young ladies in, it's always good to have that one person that can get, give me a little nugget to say, hey, she need this, I need that. And so that's always good and being able to go put my hands on people because I actually, you know, walk these same halls these young ladies are walking now. And I also was a student when these faculty and staff workers was also still here working. So that relationship, I have built that relationship and that rapport over the years. And so moving forward with me working with them now, it's always an easier process, you know, going through this um, transition. And one thing I know from having attended Florida A&M and coaching at Florida A&M, probably something that players on your team don't like is on those rare occasions they're somewhere they don't need to be. Somebody picks up a phone and lets you know. Always. They 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 understand that, you know, every day because, you know, my assistant coach, um, Mike Bland, he always uh, laughs and joke with me. He said, man, I can be at the local grocery store and somebody see me with Claflin University and they'll be like, hey, you know, Coach T, that's my guy out there. And so they learn, the young ladies learn quick, like Coach T know everybody, the instructors, the janitors, the yard, the landscaping guys, everybody. So it's, it's a, you know, it's a quick process, you know, definitely when it comes to public safety on campus, you know, got a great relationship with them. And so if they park illegally somewhere, they going to pick up the call, they going to pick up the phone and call Coach T or Coach Mike quickly. And that, that helps you in terms of helping them navigating the waters and being able to do and accomplish what you brought them there for to go to class and do the right thing. 
Absolutely. It's never the wrong time to do the right thing. I always tell them that. Always use always a camera and a recording each room. We're not when me and you was going to school, we didn't have all this. But now you have to be careful what you say and what you do in each and every room you step in. Repeat that again. You said it's never the wrong time to do the right thing. Is that what you said? That's right. Never the wrong time to do the right thing. Never. Well, I, I'm going to have that on a shirt somewhere because I like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, Coach, in, in my own experience, I know we had a our rival game against Bethune Cook. I was coaching the girls then. I got an unlisted phone. My phone ringing 1230, 1 o'clock in the morning. And I'm yes. like, what in the world? You're a coach. You know, you get a call like that is never anything good. Oh, yeah, I can go either way. <laughs> either way. Coach, we got a big game. We got Bethune Cookman tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Your girls not even at, at curfew. They not even on curfew. They have. And so I'm like, they don't have a curfew. Yeah. What do you mean they ain't got a curfew? We right. trying to win this dog all day. Oh, they cussing me out, right? Yeah. They trying to so, see your <laughs> But they have a curfew. But now we traveled, they had one. Absolutely. You know, you know, when we were in town, that you know, they were we were averaging 18, 22 wins a season. Had wins against Florida State, Miami, Florida, Auburn, Minnesota. You know, we didn't really, you know, they knew what they had to do. So fortunately, uh, we played well, because otherwise that would have been a half hour you at halftime on them when they came back and didn't play. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. It worked out for you, coach. Yeah, I, I think what it did was it worked out for them. It was, <laughs> Absolutely. I, I think it worked out for them. But, Coach, you got some big shoes to fill over there. Legendary status. Um, Coach Brownlee, you know, back from when I was coaching, man, did nobody want to play Claflin girls? Absolutely. And I don't, I, don't, I don't take this position lightly at all. You know, I'm blessed to be able to have this position. With, um, I'm, you know, I'm always – indebted to uh dr warmack and mr tony o'neill you know they bless me and say you know they bet on me and so i understand the history of women's basketball here at Clapham university and i'm willing to you know take the talk the, uh, the torch i remember i got a phone call from one assistant coaches at florida state telling me about a young lady they couldn't get in school but you know it's always amazing to me if they can't get them in school at florida state or georgia they think that we can always get them in Absolutely. We did the research, and that young lady ended up at Claflin. Legendary status. She probably was player of the year even as a freshman, Miriam Walker. She's, I know she has to be spoken in, in whispers around there. Oh, man. It's, 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 it's funny that you say that because even on the men's side, when I play here and coach on that side, when we be out traveling all around, you know, up north or down south Florida, you know, they always see our buzzers say, Clapham University. Oh, I remember when they was NEIA and they had a young lady from Georgia. You know, and I'd be like, and I used to be like, you know, Coach Samuels, Manuel Samuels. They're like, yes, man, she can score. And so uh, I always tell, you know, I always tell the young ladies now, hey, I'm looking for a Marion Samuels. <laughs> hey, weren't we all? I mean, we would come down and play South Carolina State. And they say, man, you going to play Clapham while you there? I said, for what? Why are we going to play there? <laughs> We got our hands full of South Carolina State over there with Willie Simmons. You know, we, yes. we, we didn't want any part of the Claflin 2 to come down there. Absolutely, man. So I'm trying to get this thing back rolling to, um, to the Brownlee days. You know, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some time. But, hey, we'll get there. Okay. Coach, tell, tell me how the season ended up for you last year as you as you went in at the midway point. Tell, tell these people, your listening audience, Tell them about what your team did. Wow, I, I just feel like we did something special. We didn't have the results we want to have because you always want to win. You always want to be the last team. You always want to play the last game of the tournament and win it. So uh, when I did go in the room with them for the first time, um, I had already knew some of the history um, going into the season. And so and I looked it up real quick, and I was like, oh, man, we just predicted last on the women's side. And so when me and Mr. Tony and the uh, his supporting staff went into that room, I just simply told the young ladies, hey, it's enough in the room to get it done, and we will not finish last. I don't care what we do. If I have to go out there in the jersey, <laughs> we, we are not finished last. And the, you know, the young ladies was bad. They, they brought into it what me and Coach Mike was selling. And we, you know, we, you know, came off and we 
you know, play Elizabeth City the first game, got close. Play against Shaw, came close. Then we, you know, we played Virginia State, you know, at the just before the break, we lost. And then we messed around the court. COVID. Oh man, I was like, oh man, Mr. Teal. And we supposed to come off the break and go play Norfolk for um mm. for a game. You know, that was good and bad. You know how that, <laughs> now that goes. So I was like, Okay, Mr. Tony. So me and Mr. Tony, we was talking through the whole thing and we had to sit out the you know seven to ten days and then um I just simply, you know, prayed about it, you know, and just thought about it and I was like, you know what? I want to use this time to get some practice time in. Cause I have no time to practice. I had one day to practice before we play Elizabeth City. And mm. so um I want some practice time after winter break. And so of course COVID stopped that. And so when me and Mr. Tony was on the phone, I just simply told him Delay don't mean denied, Mr. Tony. And he was like, that's what I want to hear, young fella. That's what I want to hear. And so we came back, had three days of practice, played Virginia Union, got my first win. Young ladies got the first win off winter break. And uh, I think we won one. We lost the next one. And then we messed around and won two more games. And then we just kept building brick by brick every single day, every single day. And so we went into the tournament, you know, you know, had nothing to lose. So I was like, hey, everybody is zero and zero. Don't worry about what the season entail. We're going in here to win the tournament. Everybody zero and zero. And so young ladies came out. We was messed up against Virginia Union again. And we was fortunate to come out, you know, hitting on all cylinders. And we was able to beat um, Virginia Union. And then we ran into Elizabeth City. And, you know, unfortunately, we weren't able to pull it out against Elizabeth City. But it was something to build on going into this year right here. We're looking to have a you know a special year. Wow, that sounded like you ended up um, with the Panthers stalking the jungle. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was a lot of fun because going into that tournament game, you know, I'm just tell you the truth, Mister Clayton. I never in a million years thought I would be coaching women and being the head women's coach at Clapper. I always told people being the assistant coach so long, you know, I always thought like you know. If I never be the head men's coach here, I'm okay. Cause I have the I pour everything into the program that I could. But you know, you have to be mindful of your words. I always said I don't mind being the not being a men's coach here. But God had another plan for me. And so here I am, the women's head coach here at Clapham University, and I'm delighted. Oh, coach, I, I love to feel that excitement in you. And, and I hope that our our viewers can feel that as well. Oh, yes, I'm ready. Now, I, I know that you, I see that you brought a young lady with you. Um, I'm not going to even try to introduce her. What I want you to do is, as I bring her on, I want you to introduce her to everybody. Gotcha. Morgan, <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> we have Morgan Kelson. My Morgan. She's my outspoken young lady. She's my TikToker. <laughs> She's one of my leaders. I'm returning from last year. And, you know, leave it to Morgan. She always going, you know, she always going to speak her mind. And she's one of my leaders on the team. And um, she's coming into her um, second year at Claflin. And I'm looking for her to have an outstanding year this year. And she's from Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome to the show, Morgan. Thank you. What is what, tell me about that sign over your shoulder? <laughs> um, she believed she could, so she did. Um, my family's very big on faith and uh speaking positive things, so I believe in what I'm doing, so that like transfers into me being able to do it. Okay. Tell me about the differences um uh, when coach came on board. Um, I think there was a lot more structure and discipline when Coach T came over to the women's side. Um, I think he was able to get the team to buy in as a team more than we were previously, and I feel like that helped us start winning more than we were in the past. Let me ask you a double-edged sword here because you seem like you're really kind of honest. Um, how much difference does discipline actually make in a program? Uh, coming from a high school that was extremely disciplined and then getting here my first year playing basketball, I think that um, 
it's very obvious as a player uh, what what a team looks like when it's very disciplined to what it looks like when it's not disciplined. Um, on the most undisciplined teams, well, if, when I've been on undisciplined teams, it leads to us making more mistakes in the game, um, which leads to losses when the main goal is to win. Undisciplined teams lead to undisciplined play. You can't, you cannot win. If you're not yes, sir. We always say, Coach, and I, I'm not going to I'm not going to get off uh, Morgan wanting to hear what she has to say. But we always said that you, you tell how disciplined a program is, a team is, when you have four and five o'clock in the morning practice and not on the last play of the game. That discipline has to happen way before that. Yeah, absolutely, I right, absolutely. What What do you think about that, Morgan? Um. Yeah, we definitely have. 5 a.m. practices um, and you can tell like at the beginning of the season we were kind of sluggish and it was a struggle to get up but as we started getting used to it practice started to get better the energy started to get better and now you can see like our discipline is growing over time okay um did you bring any new players in with your team this year yes i did i did i brought you brought um for a couple of junior college kids and a couple of freshmen to uh, add to the young ladies that we already had. You know, initially I was thinking, oh, we was young. You know, we had like six freshmen when I went over to the ladies. And I was like, oh, man, we got to learn how to win at home and on the road. And so we was able to win a lot of games at home, but we couldn't really win games on the road. And so I, I was thinking my thought process was to bring in all the young ladies to help them grow a little faster. But I was like, you know what? You know, being young, you're going to get old. <laughs> so I was like, just keep this young nucleus together, bring in a couple of young pieces and a couple of older pieces, Naya Morris and uh, um, Malia Williams, bringing them in from junior colleges and four-year schools. You know, I think they're going to really help us get over the, you know, this, this hump. So you were able to go inside the transfer portal and, and get a player or two? Yes, I got, you know, I got one one play out of the transfer report from Stillman um, College, and then I got, you know, ladies from the junior college and local local high schools as well. Okay. Okay. First game, when? On November 14th against North Greenville away. Is that a game that'll be in, in, in Claflin? No, it'll be in Tigerville, South Carolina. It'll be away. Our first home game will be November 19th against Morris College. In at of course in Orange Park, South Carolina. Okay, what type of support you get for your team? Man, I'm looking to have you know Morgan stated in our midnight madness. She expected you know everybody to come out to the women's uh, game just as well as the men's uh, game. But I think you know we got a good follow. I think y'all. You know, I think we got a good little um, whisper around town and on campus. And I think the student body and the community will come out and support once we get this thing rolling. Okay. Morgan, what does a good crowd mean to you? Have you have you gotten support since you've been there or did it get better? Tell us about you and your, your student support, what it, what it means to you. Um, I think student support is really important. It's, it was kind of depressing when we started last year and you can see like people don't really come to our games. They show up at the boys games. Um, but this year I kind of built a following up on TikTok based off of my team and like just background stuff that we do and just like singing and stuff on TikTok. And so out of them 27,000 followers, I'm hoping that um, a little bit of them will show up to the games, but there's also been like just the people at school that follow me are like, yeah, we're going to come to the girls game. And then like coach T said, I told them in the gym that they need to support us as much as they should um, support the boys. So I think it'll be interesting. And then, it's always fun to just play in front of a lot of people. I think the crowd is like a just another player on our team when they're going supporting us. So I, I heard Coach refer to you as his TikTok player. So you've been actually working on trying to promote your program. Um, yes, sir. Coach, to be completely honest with you, a lot of times people come out because they know the young ladies on the team. And so they, they come out to support them. Yeah. I, I think that's really actually uh, pretty creative uh, to be able to get that type of uh, 
attention and effort from a sophomore. She got two more years. She ought to have a great following by the time she leaves. <laughs> yes. Yes, and I tell the young ladies all the time, you know, it's all about the student support. You know, you got to go out and, you know, make yourself known to the students because those are the ones that's going to come to the games and support you. And we're just trying to get that, you know, electricity in the building to like it is when we go on the road with some of our CIAA folks. You know, they have a lot of support. And so we're trying to bring that same energy here at Claflin. We will. We will. It's going to be a very exciting year. We're going to have a lot of fun, win a lot of games, and it's going to be fun for everybody. Coach, who's your, uh, your biggest opponent? Because the point right now, uh, to tell you the truth, no Greenville. <laughs> First game, and so hey, that's what we worried about. Is no Greenville. We trying to go one and zero each and every day. Okay. What 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 game kind of what team really kind of gets to you that you want to make sure that you handle them? <laughs> Me yeah. or Morgan? Morgan or oh, boy. <laughs> um, to me. <laughs> Just the CIAA schools, I mean, those are our biggest opponents that we see in the uh, CIAA tournament. I think um, last year we almost split with um, uh, all the top teams. Mm -hmm. So it'll be very interesting. I think probably our biggest school that we want to beat are like um, Johnson C. Smith and Winston-Salem, Lincoln. Those are the top schools. So if we can show everybody we can compete with those schools, they'll stop ranking us at the bottom. Okay. Which one, who has the most hostile gym you go to? Uh, the most hostile gym is definitely Winston-Salem. Um, they always pack out the gym. So uh, that's what we're trying to get our school to come pack out the gym. Mm -hmm. So we can have those same type of vibes for the game. So they're, they're full for the girls team and the boys game? Yes, sir. Well, see, I, I know that feeling. Uh, we started out drawing our men. And people would leave after the women play. The guys were going at halftime and half the stands would leave. But we we were pretty good. They started, you start winning those games. Yes, sir. People support those colors. Yeah, everybody wanna be around the winner. Everybody. Yeah. I don't care. And I was telling the young ladies, you wanna win in everything. You wanna win in life, <laughs> in, a, in in the classroom. So and definitely on the playing field. You know, everybody wanna be a part of a winner. But one thing I have to say, the, the more research I've done on Claflin, the more impressed I am with the academic standards of Claflin. Being the oldest HBCU in South Carolina. Morgan, tell us a little bit about your classes and, and what you found uh, in the classroom there. Well, um, I'm a human performance recreation major with a mass communications minor. And um, when I first got here, I was very nervous about like the transition from classwork in high school to college work. But all the I've never had a professor that like just wasn't able to work with me or um, even ran into anybody in the staff that's like not willing to help me or do something extra that I might need. So the um, I'll just say that all the professors and the staff here, like the support staff, are very willing to work with you when you need help. And it's also, they bear, they make it very easy um, to transition. Okay, when a freshman comes in, talk to that freshman. Tell me what you would tell that freshman when, when you pull aside and talk to about about the school and the team. What would you say to them? Um, I would tell them not to get caught up in the um, other stuff outside of academics and basketball just because um, – you know, it's, it's fun, all fun and games, but at the end of the day, you're here for to get your degree and if they're playing basketball, to play basketball, mm -hmm. but to also not get caught up in that and to try to just have a balanced act of having fun while still getting your good grades and focusing on um, basketball if they were playing basketball. If you saw a young lady doing something that she wouldn't need, to, that she doesn't need to be doing, would you pull her aside and talk to her? Uh, yes, sir. Because there, I, when I first came here, I got caught up in stuff as well, and I had somebody talk to me, so why wouldn't I return the favor? Absolutely. Coach, I think you got a, a leader developing there for you. She, she's, she's one of my aces. She's she going she gonna to tell her like it is, Mr. Clayton. <laughs> Coach, 
Coach, you know, like I know, a lot goes on that we don't know anything about as coaches. Absolutely. And and the players themselves have to kind of police it and handle it. Absolutely. Uh, because it's their team. And if they see some stuff going on, all they could do is tell them and try to talk to them. Mm -hmm. you know? Morgan, what would you tell a young lady about coming to Claflin? What would you tell her about coming to Claflin? Look, look in the camera right there and, and tell mm -hmm. about Claflin and why she should come be your teammate. Um, anybody who wanted to come join us, I would say that we definitely have a lot of fun. Um, playing under Coach T is a lot of fun. That I mean, we're focused, we're disciplined, et cetera. But at the end of the day, she'll definitely have fun, especially um, with my teammates. I would tell them that at Claflin, you're surrounded by professors and students who want to see you thrive at the end of the day. Um, you would, I've made a lot of friends, like, like people that I seriously think will be in my life for the rest of my life. Um, so the HBCU culture, the experience that you're looking for, you're definitely going to get it at Clapham University. What's your thoughts? Do you understand if you only have a short time home for Christmas? Yes, sir. Due to like uh, COVID and just all the other outlying things that could happen, I would rather be home for just a few days and then get back to school. Coach, that's a mature outlook. That's a, that's a heck of an answer for me. Yeah, she, she's talking a good game right now. Okay, I'm a whole. <laughs> I'm a whole hurry of teammates to that. <laughs> Morgan, who do you look for? Who do you look at on your team as to provide leadership for your team? Um, I I look at the people who have been here the longest. So that would be Bree Price. He actually took me on my tour when I was being recruited. Um, I think she's one of the better players on our team and she's been here the longest as well. So that's um, probably the main person that we look to as a leader. Is she one that kind of talks to y'all that, you know, before it gets to coach or is she kind of a quiet lead by example leader? I think she's a split of both. I think that um, she more leads by example we have another player, Janelle Horton. I think she leads with her voice, um, and they kind of work together as two seniors. I had one. We were losing at halftime, and I'm going down to the locker room. The trainer comes out, stops me. That coach, uh, you might not want to go down to the locker room. I said, why? Yeah. Oh, your, your star player got him in there, and she's giving it to him. So you know, Coach, I'm I'm nosy now, so I got to go down to the locker room and stand outside the locker room door and hear. Coach, oh, she going off on them. <laughs> oh, she going off on them. She I'm called them all kind of names, and I'm gonna line y'all up one by one and kick y'all so and so if y'all don't turn around here and play. Y'all gonna have to play. It's my last year. I'm not losing to them, and she going off. So you know what I did, Coach. What you got, Miss Clay? Yeah, I turned around, went back, and stepped my butt down. <laughs> Church out. Church is out. <laughs> I went on and got me some Gatorade and sat my butt down the end of the bench and waited till they came back out. That's we ended up winning by three. We were down by 15 and 16 points. They came back and won by about three. Awesome. Awesome story. When I meet them together now, I tell them about that story. They said, Coach, you heard it. I said, Oh, yeah, 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 I heard it. Wasn't nothing else for me to say. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, I, I appreciate talking to you and Morgan. Mm -hmm. um, my intention is to talk to you through the season a couple more times, let people know how you're doing. Absolutely. Uh, be able to give an update on the program, up, uh, you know, games coming up, successes. So I want people to know more and more about your program. Morgan, the TikTok girl. Yeah. Well, Coach, I appreciate getting a chance to, to meet your leadership and Miss TikTok. <laughs> I look forward to letting people know about Claflin's athletic department and about your women's basketball team. All right. Thank you again. And thank you. Thank y'all, everybody. This is Mickey Clayton, the coach. And we're here with the Claflin Athletic Show presented by Insight, sponsored by Tony T. Chrysler Dodge Jeep of Orangeburg, South Carolina. When you need a vehicle, you need to go see them. You always support those programs that support your programs. Absolutely. That should say a lot to you.
All right. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you. Go Panthers. Stay up to date with the latest from Insights. Visit our website at insights.com. Two eyes in the middle. I N S I I G H T S. Insights is the copyright of Mac4 Enterprises, a Florida corporation. This broadcast is produced under the exclusive ownership of Mac4 Enterprises and is the intellectual property and trademark of Mac4 Enterprises. Comments of the host and other individual speakers on Insights represent the independent thoughts and representation. Talk, talk, yeah.